We're now going to continue talking about reverberation artifact in terms of the mechanism of creating the reverberation artifact. How does this work? Let's look at the illustration. You have a transducer labeled T with the surface of the transducer labeled with a dotted line. You have ultrasound waves emanating in the form of pulses from ultrasound machine towards the, uh, the image of interest. In this case, a highly reflective surface or interface that will reflect uh, the ultrasound wave back towards the transducer. In doing so, this reflective echo gives you the signal to uh, form the image on the ultrasound uh, video screen. The uh, red arrow denotes the uh, signal returning from the uh, interface, which is the first echo, and also it is the real image. Distance d from the transducer surface, as calculated by the uh, simple equation velocity times time divided by 2. This is how the ultrasound machine calculates how far to place the image based on the propagation time, assuming a certain velocity of the ultrasound wave. Now, this highly reflective surface reflects the echo back towards the transducer, which in turn suffers another reflection. Therefore, you have a second round trip of the ultrasound wave, albeit at a much smaller amplitude that goes to the reflection, the reflector, and it reflects back towards the transducer. So the, s the two round trips will lead to twice the propagation time. Therefore, the ultrasound machine thinks that it should place the reflector at a distance d1 away from the transducer, which is two times the original distance d. This explains both the uh, equal spacing between the two bands, as well as the diminishing uh, signal qual uh, amplitude of this uh, artifact, which is the first reverberation. Again, d1 is v times two times the time of propagation is by two. So this phenomenon can go on and on. You get a a third band, which in this case is D2, placed three times D from the transducer surface, and it forms a second reverberation echo, and so on and so forth. So back to the image that we showed earlier, which you see multiple uh, reverberation bands extending distally from the near field to the far field, as pointed out by the arrow. This phenomenon, again, is due to the reverberation of the ultrasound signal around the metallic object of interest. The bands form the classic example of reverberation artifact. Again, this is the uh, as clear a picture as we can show uh, of a clinical setting of this particular artifact. Now, uh, a more common setting in which you will see this is in the case of uh, a invasive procedure such as a biopsy needle or a central venous catheter needle insertion which will also demonstrate the reversion artifact. Here the yellow set of arrows point out the needle whereas the two sets of white arrows point out the uh, reverberation artifacts emanating distally from the metallic uh, object. The reverberation within the metallic needle leads to the characteristic reversion echo pattern that uh, we saw from the earlier example. Although in this case, the lines are closer uh, are closer together and the uh, differentiation of the signals are not as uh, clear cut in terms of the, the diminishing quality that is seen in the theoretical example. Nonetheless, you can use this characteristic pattern to help you locate the uh, the needle based on the reverberation uh, artifact and that in turn find out where the needle is whether you're trying to find a, an organ of interest or a vessel of interest will help you uh, manipulate and locate the needle within those objects of interest so you could properly pr uh, carry through your biopsy or central venous catheterization uh, procedures respectively so in those cases where it is a useful artifact, you take advantage of them. In cases where it is undesirable to see the reverberation artifact, you can try changing the angle of incination, use different sonographic windows, or adjust the gain or uh, time gain uh, slider bars to minimize the signal quality. Next, we're going to talk about refractive artifacts. 
As you know, refraction, uh, which was discussed in the earlier lecture, is uh, encapsulated by the Snell's Law, which uh, we'll show in the next slide very briefly. Essentially, it talks about the bending of ultrasound beams at an interface of two dissimilar materials with different velocities. This leads to multiple uh, refractive errors in the form of misregistration, edge shadowing, and ghosting. Again, quickly flashing the Snell's Law. Let's go on strict, uh, quickly to the uh, first uh, subcategory of refractive errors, which is misregistration. You may be surprised that this happens all the time. The image that you see is not what it really is. You do not actually can tr you cannot really actually trust the actual position of the organs and their interfaces, because refraction will cause bending of beams and uh, will relocate the actual interface. In this example of the right upper quadrant view, you have the kidney. Uh, situated adjacent to the liver. The interface of the gerota fascia, as seen in this image, is actually shifted from what it really is. The blue line in this example is the actual interface uh, in the person's uh, in the patient's body. But due to the refractive errors, this blue interface will actually shift to the image that you see on the screen. The incident beam hits the uh, fascia, because the uh, speed of sound is uh, different between the kidney and the liver, the beam would bend at an angle such that the signal would uh, change uh, direction. And the uh, superior pole of the right kidney would go from a more superior position to a progressively more inferior position as shown by the movement of this blue interface. Therefore, misregistration causes a, uh, a slight but nonetheless noticeable shift of the uh, organ of interest that typically is uh, clinically not that significant. But you have to keep that in mind. Now the next subcategory of uh, refractive er error or artifact is edge shadowing, otherwise known as defocusing. As beams bend at the curved surface, it loses intensity, producing a shadow around a vessel, uh, such as gallbladder uh, or an organ. Due to refraction, the beam traveling from high velocity to low velocity mediums gives a sh narrow shadow, and uh, if you go from slower to faster, you get a wider shadow. Defocusing occurs uh, classically after striking a large curved reflector, such as a vessel or the uh, wall of a gallbladder, as I mentioned earlier, and extends downward from the curved reflector's edge. Because a portion of the incident sound beam has lost to refraction, this leaves less echo signal to go back to the transducer, which explains the dark and echoic uh, characteristic uh, of the uh, shadowing phenomenon. Here, the gallbladder uh, uh, edge has a, uh, a dark line uh, distal to the curved surface, as pointed out by the arrow. Now, if you reconstruct the, uh, the mechanism of action, you have an incident beam coming from the transducer that traverses this uh, path outlined by the yellow line. As it hits this uh, uh, curved surface of the gallbladder, the beam becomes refracted, and therefore you lose a lot of signal from the initial beam. And so when the signal goes back uh, towards the uh, transducer uh, for decoding, due to the higher attenuation, due to the extra long path length traversed by the ultrasound wave, you get much less signal coming back than the surrounding regions, and that gives you the dark and echoic shadow known as defocusing. This is a beautiful picture of the gallbladder. You see the uh, bile duct uh, distal to the gallbladder. Now the third category of uh, uh, artifact uh, due to refraction is ghosting. This is pretty interesting. It occurs, uh, for example, at the abdominal fascia plane, which serves as a refractive medium, leading to double aorta, or in the case of a uterus, double gestational sac. The yellow uh, Layers there uh, represent the uh, rectus abdominis uh, muscle with the fascia layer, and you have the renal, or the real uh, abdominal aorta, denoted by the uh, the red circle. As the ultrasound beam traverses uh, beyond the abdominal muscle, it reflects off of the aorta and it bounces back towards the surface of the muscle on the underside, and the beam is refracted due to the fascia plane and goes back at the transducer from a different at a different angle. And so when you trace back the uh, line of sight. Um, along the transducer uh, uh, beamline, the image will now be uh, relocated 
uh, lateral to the actual uh, aorta location, as indicated by the gray circle. So this is a ghost aorta. Now, since ultrabound be beams comes from both sides, you end up having the same phenomena happening on this right side of the uh, rectus abdominis muscle, giving you a double aorta. So that was the ghosting phenomenon. How do you minimize or eliminate this? Well, you, again, you can vary the angle of insonation uh, of the uh, transducer, or you can interrogate across a wider area so that you can uh, see the artifact come in and out of existence. And that will tell you that it's an artifact and it's not real, it's not an anatomical anomaly. Now, misregistration defocusing artifacts need to be considered. Typically, they're not as serious, uh, but they are also at the same time difficult to eliminate completely with the above uh, techniques.